And welcome back, guys, to Risk of Rain Falcon Plays. Uh, <laughs> again, apologize. I know I'm fucking that. It sounds so goddamn cheesy, doesn't it? Risk of Rain Falcon Plays. Jesus Christ. Right? I'm going to really avoid the whole Falcon Plays portion of this uh, introduction altogether. Without that, let's just go ahead and get introduced into what survivor we're going to go with this time. Last time we were playing as accurate, and unfortunately, I blundered it up. I blew it, kid, by going back to a pro an older stage as opposed to just moving on forward, and that basically ended my run all together. So this time we're going to play as the bandit. I've never played as this guy before. I was kind of reading his skills and it looked kind of interesting and uh, let's see if I can make him work. First of all, I got to figure out lights out is going to be, okay, R2. Okay, good. So lights out, basically the bandit essentially lets you avoid da uh, damage at times. It lets you turn invisible for three seconds. And then when it when he reappears back in, any person in his radius takes like a certain amount of damage as well. So it's pretty good for kind of escaping mobs, that's for sure. A light out is basically the highlight of him, though. Apparently, with light out, which is this skill here, if you kill an enemy using light out, all of your uh, all of your cooldown abilities are pretty much reset back down to zero, so you can kind of use them again. So it's definitely really something interesting to look forward to if I'm gonna, you know, properly use this class. I'm pretty sure that basically using this class successfully is gonna be relying on um, light out itself. I'm trying to figure out who um who who the fuck is light out in the NFL? I know there's somebody. Who called Lights Out, or maybe I'm thinking of boxing Ray Lewis? Who, who knows? I don't know. Uh, I wish I did know. Now, the good thing about the bandit is, as you can see, his regular attack is out of range, so that's always good. He doesn't have a, you know, a dodging ability kind of like the commando does. However, he still does the, have the uh, invisible thing that, you know, for three seconds, so that kind of works as the role, essentially. His basic attack, though, seems really good, though. As you can see, I've been kind of pushing enemies back with it. Okay, here is going to be possible trouble for us. So all these guys are going to... Oh, shit. Oh, no. Where did they go? Oh, God, they were just jumping up and down. Okay, well, apparently, um, screw that one up. <laughs> oh, you sons of bitches imps. Okay, well, I ruined that, unfortunately. That was a waste of money and funds and time. That was a waste of everybody's time altogether, unfortunately. So let's just proceed here, and let's assume that our teleporter is going to be up in the upper left portion of the stage again. I do l really dig the bandit's regular basic attack, though. That's one of the things that's really promising. It has a little bit of a pushback to it. Um, it kind of also lets you push, um, well, not push enemies back, but it lets you kind of, uh, I guess, attack a lot faster than normal. So that's actually really good, especially when I've been playing as Akron and dealing with uh, melee ult around right now. So this is actually a really good welcome phase altogether. To kind of give me that little area between me and the enemies. Teleporter is going to be over here, which is good. Now, I don't have any much items really right now to make this happen. So, we're going to be a little bit, I guess, uh, risque essentially. And uh, see if we can kind of make this work out. Again, lights out for the dying enemy will get, let me reset my ability. So, let's definitely focus on that. I'm going to get the Wandering Vagrant, which isn't one of the, kind of one of the easier, I guess, bosses to deal with as well. So, that shouldn't be too bad for us. He says as he almost dies. <laughs> Alrighty. Wondering if I'm gonna toss your things over here, good. Alrighty, I'm kind of uh not properly using my skills here. Oh shit. Yeah, so crowd control is gonna definitely be a big problem with the vagrant. Oh, we're not the vagrant, but with the bandit, I should say. So right now I am invisible. And now I am dead. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> Uh, let's try this again. That was fucking terrible. Alright, so, with the, uh, I guess with the bandit is what I wouldn't say is that, essentially, the way to deal with the bandit is that you're gonna have to really rely on the lights out ability, it seems. Now, the lights out ability, um, that's gonna basically let you cool down all of your skills whenever you use the lights out ability to kill somebody. So, let's see, let me try this out really quick. Let me use that, and that. So... Let me do this again. And let me use my invisibility skill. Alright, cool. And there you go. As you can see, I used my lights out to kill that one dude, and all of my uh, cooldown skills reset back down to being able to use again. So essentially, one of the things you gotta worry, or not worry about, but one of the things you gotta really focus and master on using with the bandit is gonna be the lights out attack. Whenever you see an enemy is about to die, be sure to use that lights out skill and basically. Okay. Don't let this guy get away. Don't let him get away. Okay, he didn't get away. And I got the ukulele for it. Alright, good. That was actually pretty cool. So I was kind of worried about the range of the uh, attack altogether, but apparently I do reach pretty far down. So I have another one of those imp things that I kind of want to destroy when we get the money for it. 
for now, let's just continue going up here and assume that the... Let's go and assume that the teleport is going to be either on the right... It's going to be in the right portion of the map. Hopefully in the bottom or the upper right. If it's on the upper left, then we have a bit of traveling to do. But luckily for us, it will be here. Okay, one of the things I also got to master is the disappearing thing. So that lets you stay invisible for three seconds, and when you reappear, it lets you basically hit, hit the damage, uh, hit the enemy for pretty hard damage, and apparently stun him as well. So that's pretty good. Apparently, I'm Stone Cold Stunner over here, and he's gonna be uh, oh, I'm not Stone Cold Stunner, but I hit him with the Stone Cold Stunner essentially. Um, you guys ever heard? Speaking of the Stone Cold Stunner, you guys ever heard of that um, Ric Flair song? <laughs> Uh, it's fucking like it's like literally a rap song based on Rick's Flair, which is pretty amazing. All right, let's see here. Let me. Okay, so the magma worm, essentially for somebody like the man, is gonna be kind of like dealing with like almost dealing with him like the commando does. So essentially, keep your, I guess, invisibility skill active. Use it when he's coming back down to avoid damage. And there you go, easy peasy. And again, once he puffs back up, that's basically our chance to kind of damage him. And again, go in. Oh, I didn't go invisible there. Alright, it's so gonna pop up from this side. Magma Worm done. Let me go ahead and go invisible. And there we go. Unfortunately, the damage output for the bandit isn't that great, as you could imagine. I mean, again, I don't have really many skills right now or abilities that I've really mustered. I kind of went into this fight really early on, but... Now, I'm hoping for the best. Essentially, I want to deal with the enemy, the boss fast, get him out of the way, then we can kind of deal with the stragglers left over, get the items that we need, and then move on to the next stage, essentially. That's kind of what's been my, I guess, tactic recently that's kind of really worked out for me. However, this is the first time using the bandit, so I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the best to use the bandit with, as I'm almost dead. That was a really bad dodge on my part, though. Oh, and I'm dead. There you go. Ah, oh, shit. Let's try this again. Alrighty, so essentially what I'm getting with, with the bandit essentially is um, reading the skills is that you're going to have to really rely on the lights out ability, which is going to be this guy. What this does essentially is that when um, you kill an enemy with the lights out ability, it's going to essentially let you uh, reset all of your cooldown abilities as well. So say you've pretty much, you know, used your invisibility one, you've used your uh, grenade toss. If you use your uh, lights out to kill an enemy that's about to die, then everything gets reset back to zero and you can pretty much use your skills again. So essentially what it seems to me that um, your bandit class is going to be really relying on you doing that. Which is pretty much a bad thing for me because as you can imagine that's not going to be my best interest. Just because I am <laughs> not the best player when it comes to that. I'm really wild altogether as you saw my play with Acker just kind of going in balls deep and whatnot. So um, it's going to be quite of interesting for me to kind of play this tactic fully. Let me try this. Lights out. Boom. All right. Luckily, or unfortunately for me, I had none of the skills I really need to reset. And, you know, I could do this now when it's, you know, kind of easy and slow and whatnot. But, you know, when I'm in a hectic situation where there's like 50 bosses chasing me down, then I'm pretty sure it won't be as, uh, you know, <laughs> it'll be in the basically the fourth out of my mind to actually use the Lights Out ability. So, we'll see when the time comes, but uh, I wouldn't, you know, hold much uh, water under it, to, so to say, at least. So let's assume that the teleporter is in the upper left portion of the map, and let's also assume that we're getting absolutely no enemies for me to get money, which is quite fucking ridiculous. There's one here, but now I have to kind of go back down, which I pretty much was already on my way up. Alright, so let's get rid of this man here. Or not really a man, but apparently flaming skull together. And there's a jellyfish over there. Alright, I, I, like I said before, I like dealing with the... Colossus just because they give you a lot of money per kill just because they're kind of assholes They do a lot of damage in reality And this one's just gonna pretty much uh, let it pretty much just take it He just kind of uh, conceded defeat even before we even got a chance to actually defeat him altogether He was kind of like, oh, you know what? What can I do? You pretty much got me dude I can't really do much about it and uh, well, it's good for him. You know what? Sometimes it's uh, it takes a big man or a big colossi I should say not colossi. I'm not really referring to him in a plural form, but Sometimes it takes a really big person in order to uh, admit defeat, and I guess he pretty much did that for us in that aspect altogether. So let's get up up here really quickly and unlock this chest, and alright, cool. So this is going to let us uh, get some uh, health back on kills. Alrighty, Colossus, you're going to do a lot of fucking damage to us, it seems. So let me just go ahead and hang out over here, because uh, you are being a dick. That kind of hurt a lot. <laughs> I said I like dealing with Colossus because they give you a lot of money back and whatnot, but at the same time, they do a lot of damage, especially the champion versions of them. 
Alrighty, so now we have enough money to get this chest here, and again, we're proceeding towards the teleporter, which I'm assuming is going to be to the left-hand side. We got the rusty jetpack. I'm kind of iffy about the rusty jetpack. It doesn't really do too much for you. Like, I wish it kind of, like, lets you levitate around the level for a bit. Now, that would be kind of really awesome, but at the same time, I'd imagine a little bit overpowered, I suppose, so... Reason why it's not done, I'm sure. Alright, a little bit more Colossi's over here. I'm gonna throw a grenade at you. And as a matter of fact, let me just go hang out over here, and you can't do much to me over here, can you? No, you can't. Let me use the... Oh, God, I missed the, uh... Now, here's the problem with, um... What was it? A last sight? First sight? Whatever the skill is with Lights Out? It's the fact that in order to use Lights Out, it's, it only hits one enemy. It doesn't have, like, a crowd control ability to it. Which essentially sucks, because um, if you are trying to do what I'm trying to do here, which is kind of gather up enemies and just use Lights Out and kill one of them and have all my abilities reset, it's not going to work out, because you're only going to hit one enemy. And if that enemy isn't the one that's going to die, then you know what? Kind of uh, wasted your Lights Out ability right there. Alright, so let's go and activate this teleporter now. I'm not looking the best in terms of items, but the Magma Worm shouldn't be too much of an issue. It'll be kind of like dealing with it as the Commando in reality. Alright, he's gonna pop up from beneath me, so let's avoid that. And jump through here. Alright, he did actually hit me on that one, so I gotta be a little bit more vigilant in my dodging. Alright, I took another bit of damage, but that's fine. No big deal yet. I still have a lot of health at the moment, so... And I'm actually doing a lot of damage to the uh, Magma Worm, it seems, per hit, so... We should be able to get through him rather easily. So far, I'm not too crazy about the bandit, just because I feel that it's uh, essentially really relying on that, uh... First, uh... God, I forgot the skill name already. <laughs> That's how crazy I am about this class. Oh, and there you go, I killed this guy, though. And we got another attack missile. So they have two of those now for us, that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, it's really relying on that last shot ability, which, uh, like I said, I, I doesn't really work out as I thought it would work out for me. And it doesn't seem like I'm just not really capable of doing, like, a lot of uh, crowd control damage, which is something I really rely on most classes. So, uh, except for the grenades, but again, the grenades aren't really doing too much damage as well. So, again, it's a class that I'm kind of... Uh, not too crazy about at the moment. However, that's how I felt about the Enforcer before, and I kind of like the Enforcer now. I mean, it's a really risky class to use, but at the same time, it could be really beneficial. However, you know, let's keep in mind as well that some classes are also um, probably more better suited for multiplayer as well. So for all I know, the Bandit, although the Bandit doesn't really have too many abilities, I think, to benefit multiplayer, unless his last shot ability resets everybody's uh, cooldown. If that's the case, then I could see him really being really important for multiplayer and whatnot. Alright, and we got the Safeguard Lander. Drop a lander that fears and damages enemies for 10 seconds. Alright, that's good. And we got the Mortar Tube. So, for the most part right now, I could imagine that I want to focus on getting as many good items as possible. <laughs> Just because, uh, again, I'm not too crazy about the class, so as many items I could get that will actually help out my DPS, I'm going to pretty much treat this like a poor man's commando class. Probably not the right way to go about it, but... Unfortunately, with my level of gaming, probably the best for me to do so. Throw a grenade there. I went invisible right there, and let me appear and stun this man. Again, see, I don't like the invisibility thing, because, uh... At the same time, you also have to kill time by uh, letting it actually spawn and hurting... Well, respawning back and hurting the man, I guess. Uh, let's see. I do have a bit of money that I kind of want to use before we actually go through, because, like, as I said, I feel that the more items I have, it'll probably be better for me. And what the hell is this? Repulsion armor. All right, cool. And a crowbar as well. Good. So we're actually... All right, let me run faster. All right, good. We actually got, uh, three of four right there. We got three items out of those four, uh, attempts, so that's actually really good, because I'm usually pretty terrible with the, um... I guess the reward altars altogether. So right now we are looking at pretty much nothing down here, right? That I could kind of spend the rest of this money on? Probably not. I should have just kind of gone when I had the chance. I don't want to mess around with this game too, or at least with this uh, run too much, especially with this class, because I'm not too familiar with it. So I feel that the longer I stay out here, the worse it'll be. So let's just get the fuck out of here. And pretty much uh, at least be grateful that we got through the first stage, I guess. Uh, <laughs> 
I remember when I first started playing Risk of Rain, getting through the first stage was sometimes a pain in itself, so um, it's one of the things that I guess the game has been balanced enough that it's not always the case now that you can actually get through the first level to, you know, relatively success. Like, you know, most of the times you'll be able to get through it unless, you know, you use a class that you're not familiar with just yet and you get dicked around altogether. My DPS isn't that bad with the class, honestly. It's just the crowd control portion that kind of bothers me, because i that's one of the things I really rely on most of my runs, just kind of like gathering enemies up and just kind of doing my thing that way. Because you can see, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm good, but however, how often do you get really one-on-one -on -one scenarios in Risk of Rain? Not too often. Right now, we're still looking at easy. Right now, at nine minutes, we'll be spiking up to medium, though. So let me go ahead and... Let me sacrifice some health in order to get a few items. Hopefully it works out for us. And let me sacrifice... Oh, this time it didn't work out for us, so that was probably not the best idea, but you know what, whatever. You kind of have to uh, play, it, play it risque at times, essentially. So our teleporters are going to be up here, so let's go and check out the lower right portion of the map. That's sometimes where it's at as well. And let me invest in this guy. Oh, we got the level up banner, which is really good. And these guys are going to be stuck over there, which is good. So now, all I have to really do... Oh, god damn it. Now, I, need, I just need the level up banner to drop. Good. The level up banner, obviously, is really good, especially... You know what I think the level up banner would really work for? It would be the uh, Enforcer class, because you know how you're always stationary with the class in order to like kind of like post up and like do damage on enemies? Well, imagine the level up banner kind of just hanging out the whole time where you're kind of shooting a lot faster now and all those things. Believe me, I believe that could be really beneficial. When I try to the Enforcer class next time, it's one of the things I'm going to try to hopefully acquire. Get the level up banner and see if that really does work out. That was a pretty bad investment there, but oh well. So let's get this item there. That mushroom's going to pretty much take off into the sky. He's had enough already. That should give us enough for this. Oh, Brilliant Behemoth. All your attacks explode? Oh, good. This is pretty much the, the uh, crowd control I was probably looking for in reality. All right. So the teleporter is going to be down here. So let's try to go about the uh, lower left portion. It could be there as well. So now with the exploding behemoth or the whatever the hell that thing was called, I could kind of see us doing something relatively decent, I think. Not getting up here, though, that's for sure. Uh, we do have a bit of a... I guess, uh, damage over time, the, um, crowd control ability, which is pretty good. It's not gonna really take much of a- okay, here's the teleporter. So let's activate that. Alright, Magma Worm again. And let me drop this item here. I hope they could get the level up banner soon as well. That would definitely be in our best interest. I'll probably get the level up by killing one of these guys, I'd imagine. There we did. So now I just want to kind of essentially farm this little area here because I do have the uh, boost from the level up. And I think we should be able to get through the stage relatively easy as well. Magma Worm should be dead, and there he is. And he's going to give us a Toxic Centipede, which isn't too great for us because I try to generally avoid crowds with this class, it seems. But let me throw a grenade there. Now, let's not die before uh, <laughs> the counter ends as well. I'm getting a little bit too ballsy with the whole situation here, thinking that I am the most tanky class around when I'm really not. All right, let me drop this here. I really definitely need a way to regain health over time as well. Playing a low health, what? Stops time. Well, I'm, I'm at low health, so can you please stop time now, please? That would be really, really helpful. Alright, so we have to just survive for a few more seconds. What killed me? Oh no! I hung out under poison that was left behind! Oh, you motherfucker! Oh, son of a bitch. I had it too, we were done. We were pretty much on set to the third level altogether. I mean, ah, oh, that sucks altogether. Alright guys, well, once again, uh... Hopefully you enjoyed this little small look at the bandit. Uh, I, I'm going to try to do some little, uh, I guess, training on the bandit myself off camera to kind of get better with it and probably do a proper run with it later on, that's for sure. But once again, guys, hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. Be sure to leave any comments and likes, and be sure to drop some knowledge if you have any, uh, I guess, uh, 
drop on me, essentially, because obviously uh, I'm not the most brilliant uh, Risk of Rain player out there, as you can imagine, but, you know, trying to learn it, you know, trying to get back better at it and all together. So either way, guys, I'll catch you next time.